Uh, my name is Georgina Soliai. Um, I'm from, born and raised in Lakewood, Washington, but my parents are both Samoan. So my dad's from American Samoan, my mom's from Western Samoan. Um, my name is Lilibeth Esau. So I'm from here, but my parents are both from American Samoa. My mom comes from the island of Manua, the village of Tau, and my dad comes from the village of Aunu'u, but my mom is also half Tongan, so I do have Tongan roots as well. My name is Tyler. I'm from Oahu. I say it's it's a big step moving away from home. Growing up in Hawaii, it's like all we really was like exposed to is just that island life, I guess you could say. My name is Tiahi Ahi Akata Holden. I'm from Kauai, where I come from. My island is like super small, and we're surrounded by the community, not just by our friends and family, but the knowledge we have with each other and the culture as well. Um, the PI community to me just, I see it less as like a community, more of like a family. It means a lot. Diversity, uh, equality, uh, family and friends. To me it's, every, it's really everything. It's my entire life. It's my identity. Um, not just Samoa, but Tonga, Tahiti, Fiji, all the other islands. To me it's just this one giant community where we can all together and just celebrate each other's identity. So really, for me, it's my whole life. Or would you consider the uh, PI community here at PLU strong or unfounded? Um, I think just recently it's become more strong. And so sophomore year, things were all online, so there wasn't much community building and there wasn't much like meeting other Pacific Islanders. But my freshman year, I remember I came to an APISA meeting for the first time and I was the only Pacific Islander in the room. And because of that, it made me feel very discouraged that nobody else was joining and I barely saw anybody else who looked like me around campus. So my first year was really hard. I wish there were more Samoans or just more Islanders in general that I could connect with. I mean, moving away is a pretty, it's not scary feeling, but it's, it's a, uh... It's like nervous, like feeling a little bit, and when you have a Pacific Islander community, it just definitely helps ease that nerves a little bit. Um, a big part of like PI culture is food, and so I know like a ton of students are always asking like, oh, when are we gonna get to eat like food or the food from their culture, or that they miss home so much that they want to like get that taste of home. I think it's just the small things of like talking about stuff we miss back home, just little stuff like making Hawaiian food in the dorm or something like that will kind of help you get over that homesick feeling so yeah it would be nice to like incorporate food as well I know like the UC does like their best at kind of mimicking foods and bringing foods in like recipe wise it's also super limited I feel like where they kind of serve like um, similar things all the time and I see like less of like the PI food Hawaii Club and Enjoy H does a great job they make mus spam musubis and that kind of everyone loves spam and, and spam is like a huge staple for Pacific Islands so that's kind of their little taste of home that they get on campus. We don't have a lot of 808 kids like here in our school. And because we have so little, we have the club badge support our um, Hawaii kids or our Asian Pacific Islander uh, people. So that way we can connect with them with the same experiences uh, as home. Of course we have a pizza, but a pizza still, there's no hate to them, absolutely not at all. It takes a lot to run a club. But Apisa is very Asian American centered, so it's hard for Pacific Islanders to come and feel welcome when discussions are never about us. There is Hawaii Club, but the issue is a lot of us aren't from Hawaii, so that's not really a community that we can go to. I just wish they gave us more, maybe spotlight. Um, Ho'olalea just passed, but PLU hasn't posted anything about it. No videos, no posts. There's the live stream, but not much. Even with the trailer, that was like it. We want our own PI club. We want somewhere for us to meet. A lot of the student body and like people we're friends with agree with us, but 
it's hard to find faculty who see the same. I'm kind of worried whether we can make that happen soon or not, but that's, that's our main goal. I think one huge stereotype, um, I always like to mention this because I know I talk a lot about sports and just then I talked a lot about being an athlete, but that in itself is a huge stereotype to the PI community where say like you see like um, these huge stars like Troy Palomalu, there's The Rock, there's Hufango who plays for the 49ers and you see all these like huge islanders and you expect them to be super athletic. And I think that there's a huge stigma around that, especially among high schoolers who are coming out of high school and wanting to go to college. They believe that they're only seen for their athletic abilities. Um, another stereotype I believe there is, is the whole, like for someone specifically, there's this huge, um, I don't know, push towards like joining the military after high school. It's called one of the bases in, in America, Samoa. It has the number one recruiting out of all the others, US Army out of all the other recruiting areas. And I believe that's because, you know, people believe that that's the only way they'll be able to get off island. That's the only way they'll be able to leave. But um, I feel like our people are so smart and they have so much like talent that they don't have to limit themselves to being, sorry, I'm gonna get a little emotional. But they don't have to limit themselves to being athletic. They don't have to have any kind of like physical attribute or physical talent in order to, you know, pursue what they want to pursue in life. Like, you notice that, like, either your peers, like, find some, like, oh, I don't get that issue, or, like, there are issues that you face that people don't understand. Students who aren't, like, children of immigrants or students who aren't first gen or students who aren't, you know, second generation students um, who have parents who weren't able to attend college or, you know, had to attend college and had to leave for any kind of reason, like, um, with that being, like, our par their parents were sick, so they had to go home, take care of that. I feel like, um, like, Mommy may see, like, you know, the westernized European, like, like white people don't understand the family um, expectation that you have to fulfill. If I had to miss school because my dad needed help with work, I would miss school because he needs help with work, you know? Like, it's no question in our minds that that's our first priority. Um, I just feel like there are things that you experience here in the United States that you that you don't really get or on a certain level what, if you were from the islands. Um, I don't know, it's super hard to answer myself since I haven't ever been there. But um, from what I hear, like cause I have a ton of friends who came from, just that came straight from my island and they're here. And their plan is like, oh, I'm gonna work and all the money that they get here, if it's not paying for tuition, they send it back home to their parents. And so that's a huge thing. I'd say the financial um, stability, the financial like flexibility too, and freedom to be able to um, get a job and spend money on your yourself, but then also taking that portion and giving it back to families back home who don't who, who don't have jobs to make that that money or to support their families. Always trying to come out here to do whatever they can in order to send back and support them. I feel like a lot of people don't know the difference between Hawaiians, Native Hawaiians, Pacific Islanders, and Asian Americans. I think not a lot of people realize that those like from Hawaii, not everyone from Hawaii are Native Hawaiian. And on top of that, like Native Hawaiians are not different from Pacific Islanders. It's they're still part of Polynesia, they're still part of the Pacific, and we're all brothers and sisters at the end of the day. And then of course there are people who share both Asian American heritage and Pacific Islander heritage, but the communities are different. So they don't intersect at all. Of course, we've gone through colonization and other marginalized issues, but at the end of the day, our communities are different from one another, and a lot of people don't see these differences. Um, I've had people ask, like, oh, are you just, like, Hawaiian? Like, obviously, coming from Hawaii is a big diversity, like, melting pot, so I'm a bunch of different ethnicities, not just Hawaiian. The world in general, like, society in general, is kind of, like, um, put us together with, like, AAPI and so the term itself is really contradicting because it's such a huge like you know umbrella and there's a ton of different cultures in there. I don't really like the term AAPI. I don't like the term APISA because it lumps two communities together that are not alike and Asian Americans are like that's a way larger community than Pacific Islanders so we tend to get casted out a lot because Asian Americans the bigger community does well in one thing Pacific Islanders lose out on those resources because we're lumped together with them. I did feel at most times unseen where we kind of feel like we're on the lower end of the totem yeah end. of the totem pole kind of and not that we're any like you know not that one is more important than the other but more so that representation sorry representation has been like 
not equally um, given among the different communities because a lot of people don't even know like you know what islands are in the Pacific and there are like different branches of the Pacific there's there's Melanesians, Micronesians, Polynesians and under all of those are its own umbrellas and so it really is hard to encompass everything together and I think that that was that has been like a huge challenge and then even like the sharing portion too. I would say back in 1890 our, our um state Hawaii was also a country for the United States took it and I feel like a lot of people don't understand that Hawaii used to be a country but now as a state and we need to like have people uh, recognize the situation we were in because um, as of right now um, my island is also it's very Hawaiian so they don't support the United States government a lot like and be because of the annexation of Hawaii I feel like we need to like elaborate like more of our Hawaiian history into our school I really hope that we continue to grow and have this steady pace and have the want to be connected with each other. When I first came, like, there was barely anybody, but now I'm happy that luckily my sophomore year, more people are coming and I have a bigger community and just people I can lean back on. For those who don't know you me, I'm EJ. Um, I'm Samoan and I'm also African American. My experience performing was fun. I love dancing with all my heart. I guess the hardest part is just like trying to get everyone to practice. Um, just to find an available time for everyone to be there. The guys dance was fun. Um, a lot of it was performed on just like intuition on what we think. And so like a lot of us took a lot of responsibility of each night just thinking of something new, something funny, instead of just doing, you know, traditional dances, you know, something to spike up the crowd. So we just did something that we'd all agree on and that's what we had ended up with. Greetings and talent for love everyone. My name is Riri. I am uh, Samoan. I feel like my favorite memory was like dancing along with my brothers and sisters, even though we don't know each other like that. But I feel like, but you know, yeah. Um, I feel like they should know that we are good people, you know? Yeah. We're more positive and yeah. Okay, we're gonna go back. I am someone. Being able to share my culture in a place that's so welcoming and so like um, willing to be diverse and willing to learn more about other cultures. There were so many other like cultures that we danced with along with like people in the audience as well. So it was just really nice to feel that PLU kind of family um, vibe. I'm glad that I found it my senior year because these past three years have been kind of lonely. Everyone that's here now are underclassmen. So I'm trying to get all my people to come to PLU to bring up our island community. Yeah. Any words you would like to say? Yeah, that was kind of old, but very thankful to have met her. Yeah.
Me. Thank you so much for allowing us to share our culture with you. Oh, um, this After night was a blast. Doing Luo was a blast. And being a part of this community is really um, fun as well. So, yeah, just continue to be open minded, continue to learn about other cultures, continue to share your culture because it's super important. Yeah, and happy Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Yeah. My name is Lily Beth Sao. I am Samoan and Tongan. Um, like what Deppa said, seeing everybody every single day was so much fun. Practices was always fun. I actually got the opportunity to choreograph a dance. The first girls dance, Siva Mai, Lalo Mai. It's a dance that I made. It's original, so I'm happy it turned out. And I'm very thankful that my dancers are able to bring it to life. Special thanks to them because I had a vision in my head and they did way better than what I imagined. And I'm so thankful for them to being so patient with me and just, yeah, like being there for me. I hope that right now there isn't a huge Pacific Islander influence because the community in PLU is small. But I hope that this will open more opportunities for us to stand out more and be more in part of just the culture around PLU and to sh keep showcasing who we are as Pacifica people. Yeah. Um, I really hope you guys enjoyed our performance and I hope this inspires everyone to put on even more cultural events and just inspire everyone to you know, diversify our community and just bring open doors for more people to showcase who they are. So um, we danced for the Ho'olaleo 2023 Luau that they had. And I think one of my favorite parts from preparing for Ho'olaleo was our practices. They weren't as strict as like people would probably think they'd be since there was a lot to remember, but they were all fun and it was more of just us coming together like we were cousins at a family reunion. So we did, I think, seven total numbers. We started off with an intro and the song was called La'u Samoa. And that song basically expresses, La'u in Samoan means my, so La'u Samoa is like my Samoa. So it's a song about singing your appreciation for your island, your love for your island and like your identity. All of us are so deeply rooted in our identity and our culture that we wanted to share that. <laughs> The first dance, Siva Mai Lala Mai, I made that dance on my own and it was my first time kind of choreographing a Siva Samoa without any help. And doing that honestly made me feel even closer and like very proud of myself and proud of like the girls that I worked with for being able to bring it to life. That song is basically about like girls as they dance to Siva Samoa, how beautiful they look and how intricate their moves are and how they glisten like gold. The boys dance, we decided to, our original thought was to do a fatal pati, which is like a slap dance for guys, but we decided to do a more twist on it. Um, if you see the performance, you probably noticed we did a remix. I think we did three Samoan songs and then two non-Samoan songs. Next after that was the Sa Sa, which is where we were sitting and we were all clapping along to the beat. That is also a Samoan dance. And we ended it with a Tawalunga, which is a very traditional dance of appreciation. It's usually done by a child of a high chief, whether a girl, if it's a girl, you call it a taupo. If it's a guy, you call him a mangaya. Um, we bring our taupo in, and our taupo this year was Langi uh, Fatmo Sidi, and she's our senior, so we kind of gave her that honor to dance for her senior year. So it's um, kind of like a huge big deal in our community, and so it was really nice to kind of see her flourish in that way, because I think our experiences are similar, her and I, since we both started PLU at the same time and her not finding like community and me not finding community and then by the time we're seniors now our community came after they graduated high school and so it was just really nice to to incorporate her and to bring her in and to kind of give her that you know like sense of like oh home and culture at PLU it, even she probably hasn't like felt it or hasn't found it but it was just really nice to be able to dance alongside other like some ones who like are used to dancing and some of them even haven't danced at all and so it was really nice to get them in and to practice their culture since we don't find it usually outside of college um, like everyone gets busy everyone has work everyone has school and so dance is probably like the only where only place where we feel like we have like our free time and the only place we can like de-stress and things. What are your hopes for the future of the PI uh, community here at PLU after once you leave? Um, I My hope is that It'll continue on. I know that as time goes on, it's super hard to tell if we will get more PI students to come to PLU, especially in the coming years. Like, um, I know like for myself, I didn't know about PLU until I came to see the school and Parkland's such a small area where it kind of is a hidden gem in that sense. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm always rooting for um, some of my boys that are playing football back home is if they can 
make it out, make it out of the islands and um, explore sports up here and experience this experience that I have. So yeah, obviously I'm rooting for some of the people back home to um, check it out. I think we need to like, like have more people come in into our school so that way we can have more people with diverse and more PI uh, status within our school. Even though there is more diversity on campus, it is still a predominantly white institution and it can be really discouraging as a POC hearing this curriculum and looking around and not having a lot of people who look like you. So I hope those who identify the same as me would still want a sense of community and still want a sense of being together. What is your name? Lily. That's not my name. Wait, just whoa. whoa. What is your name? Wait. I'm Lily Bad. Lily Prefire. Anyways. <laughs> what is your ethnicity? I am Tongan, Hawaiian, Samoan, and Black. Yeah. What a liar. Yeah. How do you feel after performing? You know, we had some ups and downs. Twist the camera. There's a Lily. They come back. <laughs> but, you know, it was really good, you know, you know. <laughs> Suli taught me how to do my azoto dance. Deppa taught me how to chihu. <laughs> there you go. Lily taught me how to make some musubi and, um. My name's not Lily. Yeah. Anyways. What other questions? Yeah. What's your favorite right. memory from practicing with everybody or Oh right. my gosh, yes. We had like a dance off with Lale. Where's Lale? Lale's over there. Do your dance. Do your yes. dance. Yes. 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 Lale. That was our dance off. Obviously, Luana won though. Oh. <laughs> Can you give me something for the camera? Oh, sorry. Oh. Okay, we'll be not using that. Deppa. Deppa. Let's see it. Hi. Woo! Come on, give us what something. What are we doing? Give me your dance. Know. For your dance off. I don't have a, uh, my dance off. This is my favorite one. Yes. Hey, hey. hey. <laughs> Any other questions? Anything you would like to say to the POU community? Yes. Vote for me for president. Stop recording. I need to find that out. Sorry. Just walk. Don't worry about the truck. No, so I'm gonna get you in the shot. Walk faster, guys. Oh, um, I don't go to school here. Okay. Baby, that's it. I make music. Yeah. Musubizi, M-U-S-U-B-I-Z-Y. I'm dropping a single pretty soon, so be on the lookout for that.